Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're gonna talk about time code. So let's dive right into it. Now first you have to understand what is the problem that you are trying to solve here. The problem is that many production uses multiple sources. For example, uh, think of it this way, a cricket match or a football or a big action set where you have to have multiple cameras recording the event and multiple audio equipments. Now here's the problem. Um, if you have to collect all that file, uh, the video files, the audio files, and if you have to sync them manually, basically this happens here, this happens here, like, you know, time-wise, it's very expensive. And I don't mean expensive in terms of money, in terms of time consumption, it's very high. In terms of if you want to do it automatically, those computers will basically freeze up while it's doing that processing. And it's expensive, basically, it's expensive in every term, which consequently end up costing you a lot of money and time. So fundamentally, it's a system that people want to avoid. So audio and video syncing is a uh, something that people want to avoid you want something that is like you know click and done now another time uh, you have to understand the importance of it if you are doing a live broadcasting specifically in news channels or things of that nature uh, you don't have luxury of post processing for all the event all the processing they are happening in real time basically camera a camera b and camera c uh, mic a mic b mic c all are working at the same time all are creating file live everything is being streamed to the world live you do not have the luxury of syncing the file in the post production so many times you can understand that it does not matter whether you're using fn8 or something else everything has to work in one go so first solution that we utilize is time code now be mindful time code is just step one so each frame of video gets its own stamp so think of it this way there is a master clock that is sending signal to however equipment you have connected to it you may be doing something very simple like just a camera just a microphone or you may have like camera a camera b camera c your drone camera d and uh, like you know uh, two three microphones independent microphone recording things you may have uh, multiple things connected with one time code it could be done wired or wireless that's up to you but you get the point basically everything that is connected to that system will get a metadata that is similar to all of them basically uh at this point 18 uh, 18 minutes 53 uh, 18 hour 53 minutes 20 second frame number six will be same in of every single equipment so audio clips will know like this unit of audio was for this frame this unit uh, this frame was captured simultaneously as this one now you may be like why the heck that is important think of this way. first that is syncing that's everything is being synced on a basic level like file itself is sync it already has the data all you have to do is right click and sync it it all the computer already knows even if your file uh, let's say your recorder started or your recorder started five seconds early your camera started 10 minutes late all the file already have the simultaneous data so there is a master clock in the file all you have to do all your software has to do is right click and sync it done so that's the whole point allows auto syncing in of multiple devices now uh, um, syncing you can utilize uh, what we call scratch audio which i do most of the all the time basically i have audio proper audio recorder and our uh, audio channel on my uh, camera now those utilize computational uh, system to guess this thing it does work no problem and i do make uh, my clips are 30 minutes uh, limited so they are more than good enough however if you are not in a quiet room however what happens if you are in a very noisy place where each camera is capturing audio differently syncing them would be very difficult and visually syncing them while it can be done and we have been doing this you know through negative era it's tedious time consuming so utilizing time code allows you to just right click sync and that has a benefit let's say you are capturing a wedding and you have camera a camera b camera drone uh, whatever else all of them would be synced that is really really uh, precious so that's the whole point and a clock, uh, clock data is uh, on all the equipment is fed externally that could be uh, directly fed from uh, one equipment to another for example if you pay attention to basically cinema grid cameras you will notice there is a time code in time code out there is a gel lock in gel lock out sync in sync out what the hell those are those are there if you want to use the equipment itself as a master you can do that so for example your camera you're like hey this camera has the one of the best crystal it has the least amount of drifting you may like okay just pull out a cable from this connect every other camera to, uh, to it and this will become master and all everything else will get the same clock data from this puppy and most of the time audio recorders generally pay a lot of attention in this department it's like cameras they are like they're good but audio recorders they're like they are really good so many audio recorders especially high end one they have like temperature compensated oscillators so they are really really good they are precise they do not drift so uh, you can just take data from that and feed it to everything else so every file audio file video file that you are creating is getting a metadata layer that layer is gonna sync all of them to one clock that is awesome that's the whole point time code is so important like uh, you may find um, 
why Panasonic is the only one that has a mirrorless camera in Netflix approved list, not Sony A7S III. The reason is very simple. Uh, Panasonic has time coded. If Sony had given that port, they would have literally gotten a uh, basically Netflix approved uh, mirrorless camera. So you can understand that's how important it is like production world if you go there and you're like i don't know what time code is they're like that's the door disappear into that fundamentally a requirement thing even if you are just utilizing one camera one uh, microphone you will still be expected to utilize this this is a kind of important thing so uh, and most of the time if you are dealing with equipment that is like not professional grade uh, you know enthusiast grade if let's say you have a camera and you have to feed time code into this how the heck are you gonna do that thankfully my kin can utilize uh, be utilized for that function you can have like let's say left channel have that time code data be mindful do not try to listen to that it will sound like a white noise only your software can make sense of that so this is awesome it does work we have been utilizing this however at this point in time all you are doing is yelling time signal yeah the master clock that is whichever camera it is whichever external equipment it is just yelling it's like time right now is seven time right now is eight time right now is you know nine so that's good and all but every clock uh, that is running the equipments itself basically the camera oscillator itself they're still working what does that mean that simply means those inherently will start drifting because again these are not atomic clocks they drift they drift very little but if you are rec doing recordings that are like let's say three hours long you will randomly notice even though technically everything has time code and you're like okay three hour footage and you're like okay let's sync audio and video you'll be like wait a minute why the heck audio is like t uh, three seconds smaller why the heck audio at the end of it is like starts to drift off that happens because the clock itself drifted. Basically, the oscillator was not precise enough. So that's the limiting factor. So if you have to do time code, and if all you are doing is short scenes, basically like, you know, five seconds is more than good enough, don't even think about it. The moment you start to cross that 30 minute mark, you have to pay attention to that. And that's why like people will be very serious. Like, dude, this oscillator is the best oscillator. These are, have been tested by very low drift. They will utilize that for time coding. And even in those scenarios, you may find it is still not good enough because all it is just a metadata. It's just yelling. But what if the camera itself ran ahead of it? And it's like camera recorded uh, frame, uh, basically th three, when watch was yelling frame number two happens so and it's not an issue in small runs but the moment you used to make the duration longer let's say three hour long or maybe a concert that could go for eight or nine hours good luck with that time code will simply not do enough it's good enough for short scenes it's good enough to sync as many cameras you want to do but do not expect them to work for like you know one hour or two hours or three hours think of it this way below 30 minutes gg after 30 minutes good luck so that's the whole point because it does not fix the drifting issue. Every equipment, every mirrorless camera, every audio recorder has its own clock and all those clocks are working. They will drift based on their temperature. They will drift based on their voltage. And you will have a scenario where like, dude, even though you feed the time code, it was not enough. It's good enough for short duration, but not for very long duration. You have to be very mindful of that. That's the limitation of time code. Then we come to the time locks, uh, time codes of bigger brother, gen lock. Now gen lock, people realize this very early on with time code. It's like it's not good enough. So we needed what we call syncing it. Basically, everything has to be synced, not just like okay, listen to the master clock. No, follow the master clock. So how do we achieve sync? Simply uh, think of it this way: you create a protocol that allows you to override everything. Basically, the master clock, whatever it is, maybe a camera, maybe a dedicated equipment, and that will trigger each equipment based on its own bit. So it's like frame number one, go every equipment will capture at that moment even if it's the internal oscillator is like hey we should be at frame number four is like no i'm just gonna listen to the uh, basically gen lock that's why it's classified as lock in old days it used to be called a generator lock so you get the point gen lock like you have to listen to this master clock now wh whatever the master clock is saying every other equipment has to listen so even if master clock itself starts to drift there is no issue in that because audio and video both are following the same master it's like uh, think of it this way your train uh, instead of going uh, faster slower it's not a big deal but what happens if your left and right starts to go away that's the issue with the time code because again okay, each equipment is following its own clock they have to drift that's why like you know derailment will happen but but in this scenario, once you have gen lock, even if your main clock goes like you know a bit slower, a bit faster, it does not make a, uh, a difference. And this is the primary function of gen lock. That's why it's classified as locking. It's like internal clock is ignored and master clock is used. Every frame is triggered at the same time. Now, this function is very precious for some certain applications. For example, live broadcasting. If you try to do live broadcasting without this function, good luck with that. 
good luck with that you you will better start everything in the morning let's say all the equipments go in the morning everything is sound everything is standing and like uh, after three or four hours we were like dude why the heck your frame is like you know four or five frames of offset at the time let's say eight nine hours in you will be like dude the person is like speaking uh, you may have a weird scene where like person is speaking afterwards and the audio came already that could also happen because your camera's uh, oscillator may be lagging things of that nature has happened that's why we know gen lock is necessary thing generator lock so in live broadcasting don't even think about uh, utilizing uh, time code only you have to use time code plus gen lock now 360 uh, if you want let's say you want to have a camera equipment like this where you are capturing everything and if all the sensors are triggered bit uh, you know offset history everything moves in this world and heck what if this uh, rig that you have built it's moving itself so if the shutter uh, basically of the electronic shutter or the sensor goes like this everything is awesome but what happens if it goes like this one goes early another goes left things have moved now the stitching software that has to stitch the footage or in a 360 system it simply will be like what the hell i'm supposed to do it has to do blurring now that's a very critical thing you have to know for 360 degree work for vr work for uh, 3d systems you have to utilize genlock so if you're like, hey, I'm going to use time code to sync all those things, that's good enough, but only for a few seconds. And even like if you really want to not give headache to your viewers, do not try that. You have to have genlock. Only then you can make a VR that's not going to make people vomit because all sensor triggered is exactly the same to me. Like if you do only time code, it's like you are hoping for this. What you may have is like, now, the drifting that I'm talking about, it could be as little as one frame, but it will give more than enough headache for you to deal with. So fundamentally, Genlock is basically bigger brother of time code. Everything is awesome about Genlock. However, it does come with one crap caveat. It's not found on very uh, many cameras. And uh, that's why the Panasonic cameras, box camera, was so unique. It's like for $2,000 or less, it had a time code camera that's good enough on its own. It also has Genlock in. So that was quite amazing. So you can literally have this box camera and make a 360 degree system uh, like eight, nine cameras or 20, 30, depending on how many you want to do, go YOLO on it. And stitching the, uh, would be super easy. Software would be like, I got this. Every frame is triggered exactly. So stitching would be super easy. It does not have to do blurring. If you want to do VR rig, it's like, I got this. 360, I got this. 3D, got this. So that's why you will pay attention to RE, RED, all those uh, basically even Sony high-end cameras. All of them have Genlock. That is the primary reason for it. So if you want to use multiple cameras and you have to be dead sure that the syncing is there, you have to utilize Genlock. And then for live broadcasting, audio video syncing can only be done if this Genlock is there. That's why you pay attention to Blackmagic. They pay a lot of attention into Genlock. Time code everybody knows, but Genlock, uh, not that many people pay attention to. The reason is that if you want to make sure that you can do live streaming for long, you have to use that. If you want to do stitching or any kind of work where the time synchronicity is absolute, you have to use this. So Genlock is the uh, basically master level technology this like at this point in time you have achieved synchro synchronicity and to do this in professional environment people utilize external clocks these clocks are what we classify as temperature compensated voltage compensated oscillators what does that mean that simply means uh, it knows it's running on a battery so battery will give up the voltage so if you take a battery that is like quote unquote 3 volt you will notice that it will start at like 4.2 then it will go down to 2.8 before it, it's a quote unquote dead so the oscillator will know that fact it will know that i'm if i'm getting low voltage i'm supposed my oscillation is supposed to drift so they will have a compensation circuit where it's like no voltage will be exactly three volt again it's wasteful but it does make sure your oscillator is precise then there will be a temperature element because again in colder environment your oscillator will behave differently in a hotter environment it will behave differently but if you temperature lock it and compensate for it gg is it like this is the as close as you can get to absolute time compare like the only other option is like have an atomic clock. So these uh, basically temperature and voltage compensated oscillator are used in a small blocks. These blocks have a wireless signal that is talking to other units. Let's say you have four cameras or five cameras or nine, ten cameras. And if you can't directly connect them utilizing a cable, which mind you at this point in time, you have to make sure all the cables are exactly same length or there are process which will allow you to what we call quote unquote uh, sync it so minor delays between the because again it's an electrical signal it will take time to travel from point a to point b it's more than uh, you know negligible but if you really want to be precise about your work you have to run uh, some algorithms that will allow you to fine tune that also so it's like no this is exactly as good as we can get it you can do that 
So in those sort of scenarios, they will have that block which has a battery, which has a clock, which is like as, as absolutely stable as they can make it, and they'll have a wireless signal that will keep talking to other clocks that are running on the same circuit, and they're like they'll keep making sure. And these clocks on their own, even if the wireless signal gets a drop off, they have an accuracy rating of 24 hours one frame. Like if you run whatever frame rate you are, you, if you are running 60 frame per second, you are running uh, 24 frame per second, it does not matter. Whatever frame rate you are running, uh, if you run it continuously for a whole day, you will have be only out or in by one frame. That's really good. Like compared to a camera's own clock, good luck with that. If you run it for like two, three hours, you will already start to be like five or six frames in or out. So fundamentally, that's really uh, important for basically big production budget. You may notice like camera itself is there, but there will be like a big chunk of money spent for gen locking everything and uh, broadcast industry news industry they have gen locking everything is gen locked by cable with absolute certainty and sometimes they have a backup cable just to make sure no your gen lock is not gonna break because the moment it breaks everything else falls apart so it has to be done absolutely and thoroughly so what are our options now be mindful thankfully uh, normal time sync is more than good enough for most cases that's why if you look at uh, netflix uh, basically approved camera list you will find lumix sh1 is there now why the heck this is the only mirrorless there is because this uh, flash code can be utilized as a time sync system not a gen lock just time code now that's more than good enough because again if you're doing a tv show or you're doing a movie your each take is very short it's like take one few seconds done take one few minutes done it's not gonna be like take one three hours later that's not gonna happen so they know that for a fact so at that point in time time lock uh, time code is more than good enough and that's why sony a7s3 is not accepted even though sony's a7 same technology same uh, sensor and same video format has been approved with other cameras the primary reason for that is most of them have time code so if sony had time code into their camera they would have easily gotten that netflix approval so that's the whole point uh, that syncing is good enough for more than enough scenario you never have to need gen lock however uh, what to do if you are not utilizing sh1 what can you do thankfully microphone can be utilized be mindful double check your software can read it or not and never try to listen to that audio that's very harsh very painful audio do not try to listen to that time code audio so these are the thankfully we can do that and many people have done amazing work amazing multiple camera work utilizing tentacle sync is more than good enough and if you really want to go yellow you can go into that temperature compensated and voltage uh, absolutely <laughs> Cause oscillators and all that those are expensive those are so expensive they make your uh, mirrorless camera look cheap so be mindful of that however uh, gen lock is a must for certain scenarios you have to be aware of that if you are thinking about doing live streams that are very long you have to invest in that if you are thinking about making a 360 degree footage you have to spend on that if you are thinking about vr 3d you have to spend on that there is no backup or secondary option or third tertiary option you have to do that so this is one thing and sometimes people have utilized some unique ways where they are like you know uh, running two cameras like high speed camera and uh, like you know low speed camera like normal camera high speed camera on the same time code circuit there is a way to you can run that and uh, it's just like you know frame one uh, frame it will wait for 10 frames from the high speed camera then it will like okay frame 11 frame 2 uh, to, 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 to 10 frames like it you can do like this and it will be perfectly synced so there is a lot of uh, amazing option utilizing gen lock and broadcast industry you're gonna say this camera is broadcast industry it does not have gen lock they're like that's the door disappear so thankfully for more more than uh, enough of us time code is good enough you can do that with any camera nowadays and uh, if you are willing to spend money you can get into gen lock and at that point in time syncing audio video should not be an issue unless you are doing something wrong or you have a fault equipment so this was my presentation on Genlock and Timecode. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you are free, and as always, thanks for watching.